Welcome back to episode number nine of the Tipsy Tailgate. We are excited to bring you this one after one week of not bringing you a podcast. We are back. Um, episode nine, I believe. Uh, this one, we've got a really good one in store. We've got our NFL Mock Draft 2.0. Uh, we're going to be going through the first 15 picks of the NFL Draft for you guys. And then we also have our MLB predictions, Cy Young, uh, MVP, and the Sleeper Team. Uh, so without further ado, I'm Aiden. I'm Ben. I'm Jake. And uh, let's get into it. So uh, first, I'll start with my MLB predictions. Uh, I have the World Series. I think it's going to be the New York Yankees versus the San Diego Padres. I think the Padres will surprisingly go on. And I think they actually make it as the wild card team. I think the Dodgers are too good not to, to clinch that division. But I think the Padres make it in. I think they capture a little bit of luck and a little bit of uh, momentum at the end. And they go through and they, they end up beating the Yankees. Um, they got a really nice team there. Their five man rotation is probably the best in baseball besides the Dodgers. Um, it's a, it's a stacked crew. They've got, uh, Tatis, um, Machado, uh, Will Myers, all those guys, you know, they, they're a stacked squad, uh, really, really can all come together this year. And I think that they're going to surprise a lot of teams. Um, that's my world series pick. What about you guys? Uh, and I, I don't mind you picking the Padres. I personally, I have to take the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers are the best team in baseball. I think they have the best pitching staff in baseball. Um, I think Mookie Betts, we're going to get into this a little later, but I think he has a real shot at winning the MVP this year. Um, but I have, I also have the Yankees coming out of the AL. I think they're the best team on paper in the American League. But, you know, they've had a little bit of history here, not really getting it done in the postseason recently. But I think this year... Sadly, as a Red Sox fan, I have to say this. I think this is the year that the Yankees finally make it to the World Series. However, I have the Dodgers winning the World Series in six or seven games. I think it'll be a great one. Yeah, I mean, as per usual, me and, me and Ben agree about most of these lists and stuff. So I'm Yankees-Dodgers as well. Um, I, I think the Dodgers have the best rotation in baseball. I think that division is going to be the best division in baseball yeah. with the Dodgers, yeah. uh, the Padres, Diamondbacks. You know, even I think Rock. that division has a, a real shot to be one of the best we've seen in a long time. Yeah, in the right. I agree. And I'm, I'm also in agreement that it'll. I think it'll be a six-game series. I think the Yankees will get there, and they're going to have a great playoff run. But ultimately, when you're facing who I think is the best rotation in baseball, it's it, you, you're really going to have to hit the rocks off the wall. Yeah, and I agree with that. Obviously, the Dodgers, it's kind of the, the obvious pick that, you know, they're just probably the most stacked squad we've seen in yeah. – However many years, yeah. um, it's it's pretty hard not to just take them. Uh, but I'm just going to ride on the Padres train. Once they went out and they grabbed a couple guys um, this offseason earlier, I, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to ride with them. Um, Tatis probably going to have another great year. I don't know if he has as good of a year as he had last year, but, um, you know, they've got all those guys that could pick up the slack. Um, I believe they even – don't they even have uh, Eric Hosmer, um, just another guy that's postseason clutch, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's a really nice squad out there. Um, but obviously, yeah, that division is going to be crazy. Um, so let's get into our sleeper teams. I'm actually going ahead and going to give mine first. I think that the Angels are going to be a really nice sleeper team. I think they make it in as the wild card team. Um, I think Mike Trout, obviously, he's the guy. Rendon. Uh, and then you got Shohei. Now, I think this is the year a lot of people are saying that Shohei kind of shows out as that actual Babe Ruth type of player where he plays, mm -hmm. he pitches pretty decently, at least maybe even well, and he hits great. We've already seen him hitting great. Uh, his pitching hasn't really fully come together yet, but uh, this, a lot of people think this might be the year. And I think this is the year the angels get into it and uh, make the run, make their run for the postseason. I, um, I actually would have gone the, with the angels as well if you hadn't taken them, but uh, for variety's sake, I'm actually, I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Phillies. I think that they actually have a good squad uh, Bryce Harper is a superstar. I think that he takes too much heat. Sure, he doesn't have the best batting average in the world, but honestly, I'm a more manalytics guy over analytics, and I think the Phillies have a real shot. Yeah, I mean, for me, I don't know how much of a sleeper this is because they are consistently good and they're consistently a playoff team, but I have Houston making a deep run and even playing the Yankees um, for the AL title. You know, I think you had Correa turned down an $120 million extension. I think he's going to have one of the best years of his career. Altuve is going to bring his numbers back up. And that, you know, you're going to have a healthy Verlander back. So anytime you have that, it, it makes things very difficult for other teams. 
I sure. agree. I also think it's worth mentioning, um, not really much of a sleeper team uh, after that Lindor trade, but I think the Mets are going to have a really deep run. Um, yeah. Obviously, they go ahead and they face, if they get to the ALCS, they go ahead and they face the Dodgers or the Padres most likely, and that's just yeah. going to be a huge step to overcome. But I think DeGrom, best pitcher in baseball, um, he's like, we're just going to get into it anyway, but he yeah. is my pick for the Cy Young. Um, he's he's just, he is just lights out. I mean, talk about talk about a pitcher that you could just trust day in, day out. It's him. He's the guy I'm taking. If I have a one game rotation, he's the guy I'm taking. If it's a seven yeah. game series and, and he can get two games in, I'm taking him. Um, so the Mets, I think they're going to make a really good push. Um, uh, a lot of Mets fans in this house that I'm from, but, uh, you know, we watch every game. We see all the struggle through the year. So hopefully uh, the Mets can make a little bit of a run. Um, I, I honestly, I think there's a real possibility that we could see a bit of a battle for New York in the World Series. I think oh, the Mets have made that would, so that would many key additions. I think that would be great. Talk about talk about bringing baseball back to the intense playoff format. I mean, if there's a Subway Series in the World Series, I, I don't think you can get any crazier than that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get into our picks. Um, right here, I got uh, – you know, a little, a little bland, but I got Mike Trout as my AL MVP. He's just, he's so good. And I think this year, if the, the Angels come all together, um, I think that it's easy to go with him um, as uh, the MVP. And the NL side, I have this man right here, Juan Soto. Um, he's one of my favorite players in baseball. He is so young and so talented. Mm -hmm. um, just a guy, talk about a guy who could just hit the lights out of the baseball hits for an average, hits for RBIs, home runs, um, just a star in the making. And he's already a star. Uh, I, I think this is the year he really breaks out and gets his MVP uh, award. Then on the Cy Young side, of course, for the NL, I have uh, Jacob deGrom. And then for the AL, I'm actually going to go with Lucas Giolito. I think another sleeper team is the White Sox, and I think that they're going to be very good. Obviously, losing Eloy Jimenez hurts a lot. Uh, I think it was five to six months on a uh, shoulder injury. Um, so I don't know if they get him back at any point, but uh, losing him hurts a lot. Uh, but I still think they're going to make a good run. I, I believe I have them. Yeah, I have them making it uh, into the playoffs um, and losing or actually, yeah, losing to the Yankees in the ALCS. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But you, Lucas Giolito, he's a star. So uh, for for MVP, I had in the NL, I took Mookie Betts, as I said before, Um as a Red Sox fan, I watched him dominate for years. Uh, he was a key, the key contributor to us winning the World Series back in 2018. Um, so I think he will win the NL MVP. Obviously, the Dodgers, best team in baseball on paper, let's be honest. Um, I don't think there's much stopping them this year. And for the AL MVP, I actually agree with you, Aiden. I think Mike Trout, it's a bit of a boring pick, but yeah. I think, you know, obviously he's just fantastic. But a guy I want to give a little bit of love is Vlad Guerrero Jr. I think that he could have a fantastic year. I love Guerrero. Uh, you know, he might not. you got to take a big uh, step, though, too. He needs to take a big step, I, I know. But I think that, obviously, he has all the tools to do it. So I want to give him a little bit of love in this conversation. And yeah, I agree. T talk about a team that's going to surprise a lot of people this year. Mm -hmm. I think the Blue Jays are actually yeah. going to sneak in as a wild card I team. I think they'll make the postseason for sure. I think, I think they will. And and that's a team that's very good. And, you know, obviously, Vlad Guerrero, he's got to take a huge step up um, for what, he, what he's been doing the past couple of years. But he's primed to do so. He's in yeah. – Everyone says it, but he's in the best shape of his life right now. Um, that's like no joke. He actually is. And uh, he's primed to have a good year. I agree. Uh, so, All right, so mine. Oh, never oh, mind. Are you going MVP or am I going Cy Young right now? Oh, yeah. Go no, you go Cy Young. Okay. So for the AL Cy Young, it pains me to say this, giving the Yankees all this love in this video as a Red Sox fan, but I have to go with Garrett Cole. I think he's the best pitcher in the AL. Uh, finished in the top five the last three years. I honestly think he's just due for it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with Garrett Cole in the AL and for the NL, uh, I'm going to go with DeGrom as well. I think he's the best pitcher in baseball. Uh, so yeah, those are my two picks. All right. So, so um, my NL MVP this year, I actually had Ronald Acuna Jr. I think he is going like another guy like Vlad Guerrero Jr. I mean, he's already cemented himself as you know a top player in the MLB but he does need to make that next step to be the guy, like the face of the MLB, sort of like a Fernando Tatis leap like he had last year. Um, and I think he can do it. I think the Braves are going to be very good. I'm looking at pro 
get a good record. They're supposed to win 93 games. So they're obviously going to be a threat. And then my AL MVP, it's hard to bet against Mike Trout. Yeah. I don't think you can ever really bet against him. I mean, he's top five in MVP voting every single year, not top three. Um, so my American League Cy Young is also Garrett Cole. I think he's due. I think another year in New York is, is going to really help him. Mm-hmm. And then NL-wise, I have back-to-back Cy Young, Trevor Bauer. I think having that rotational help around him, he, he's not even the opening day starter for the Dodgers. Like yeah. He was your reigning Cy Young. So he's going to have no pressure on him whatsoever. Just got his money. He's living very comfortably, you know, Los Angeles, back home. I, I mean, I think this is the perfect element for him to succeed and, and be the best pitcher he can be. Yeah. Now, now is he is he the uh, the third starter or the second starter in that rotation? Because in my opinion, I'd go Bueller over him just to just to give him that that top of the rotation experience. But and to be right. honest, at this point, I would actually have Kershaw as the third pitcher in so that would rotation. I. Yeah, I he think started. He, you he know, he's aging wanted. a little bit. I still think he's dominant and a stud and could be an ace. He uh, takes a step back. I but I think he back. takes a step back a little bit. And I think that Walker Bueller and uh, Trevor Bauer will be the one and two pitchers in that rotation. And I think it was more so just like, oh, he's been a Dodger for the last 10 years. You know, we're going to give him the opening day start. So mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that's why he's there number one right now. Um, but yeah, there was a big debate like why he was the opening day starter when you have Walker Bueller and Trevor Bauer. Yeah. Um, so that was both your picks, right? Yeah. Good. All right. So um, we're all huge baseball fans and we're definitely going to dive into baseball a lot this year. Um, so if you like baseball, please make sure to subscribe. Um, and let's get into my favorite part of the, uh, of the day, of the day, actually. Uh, NFL Mock Draft 2.0. Um, we're excited about it. A lot of trades went down um, in the past uh, two weeks. And we haven't really been able to comment on it because we didn't have we didn't put out a podcast. But uh, we're back and we're gonna throw in our fifteen top fifteen mocks uh, right now. So let me get into it. Let's go. We'll go pick by pick. Um, let me start this off. I've got the Jacksonville Jaguars. I got them going Trevor Lawrence. Uh, not much to really go into. Most obvious pick in the draft. If anyone says it different, they don't know football. So Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I have Trevor Lawrence too. Uh might be the best prospect of all time. Uh, I think it's an easy pick at one. Yep. All right. Number two, the New York Jets, highly linked to my man from BYU, Zach Wilson. And you know what? I think it happens. Obviously, there's a lot of discussions going on. They can keep Darnold, trade back, get a bunch of picks, and kind of bulk this team up for the for years to come. Um, but I don't think they do that. I think the Jets they love uh, making noise, and I think they're tired of being tired of being the laughing stock of the league. Um, they want to get a quarterback that's going to make a spark. And from all the pro day talk and everything going around, obviously, it's pretty hard to have a bad pro day. Only pro day that I've heard negative from was Teddy Bridgewater. Um, but Zach Wilson, you know, he showed out and I think he got, he caught the eyes of a lot of jet executives and coaches. So I think they go Zach Wilson there. Uh, I agree with you. If I were the jets, I would not go with Zach Wilson, to be honest with you. I'm not a very big Zach Wilson fan. I don't know what it is about him. Just something about it turns me off, but yeah, I think the jets are going to go with Wilson. Yeah. I mean, I, I also am not the biggest Zach Wilson fan and I am a Jets fan. Um, I think they're going to take Zach Wilson. I think they're going to keep Darnold too, which is going to be even scarier because your quarterback battle is going to be Zach Wilson and Sam Darnold. It's not like you have these two, you know, studs competing after anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I were the Jets, I'd move back, keep Darnold, build around Darnold, and give him one last shot to really cement himself because uh, he is only 23, and this is going to be his fourth year in the NFL. So he's still very young. I agree. We'll see uh, how that goes, but obviously – very big decision for the Jets uh, this year. One of the decisions that's kind of going to shape whether or not this Sala um, time works in uh, in New York, because if they make the right move, you know, he could look like a genius. If they make the wrong move, he looks like an idiot. So touching um, upon um, Donald a little bit here, I, I, I really hope for Donald's sake that he gets moved. And I think a good spot for him could be the Washington football team. I think that'd be a really good fit with Ron Rivera, a great defense, Terry McLaurin, a great receiver. So I hope for Donald's sake, he gets moved. And if he does, I hope it's the Washington. Hey, and you know, Washington, they they got a really nice team around them. And, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe if, if they go and they make a couple moves, um, 
So, you know, I, I just keep looking and I see a squad. If they can go ahead and grab Zach Darn or um, Sam Darnold, uh, that's a team that's going to be pretty competitive. You know, they, they made it to the playoffs this year and they kind of, they pretty much, they gave the Bucks their hardest fight in all the playoffs. Yeah. And uh, that's a defense that's primed to just be a top five defense again. Yeah, they've um, Chase Young, absolute game wrecker. Tony Gibson, uh, beast running back. Um, they're really, and they, you know, actually they've, they've been getting some good production from Logan Thomas, their tight end. So they've got a pretty nice squad around them. Um, pick number three, San Francisco 49ers. Now this is a new pick. Um, the Niners traded up obviously with the dolphins and they jumped up to three. Um, everyone is saying, Oh, the reports are coming out of San Francisco that they don't want to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, that they're keeping them all this stuff. Um, that's just – I don't believe it for a second. Oh, I actually saw today that they publicly stated the, the price player. that it would take to acquire Jimmy G. Yeah, I, I heard it was a first-rounder. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, when you trade up, you give that much draft capital to go up to number three. You're drafting a quarterback. There's You mm-hmm. can't tell me different. Yeah. Um, even if they swear on everything that they're keeping them. It's Especially in such so- a QB-heavy draft class. Right. Yeah. They, they have to go QB. And I think, you know what they do here? A lot of rumors going on with Mac Jones about how um, they need an NFL ready quarterback. They need a guy that's ready to go. I don't think they actually do. I think what they're going to do is I don't know how many uh, suitors are going to have for Jimmy G to be honest. And if you're asking a first round pick, I don't think they get a first round pick from him. So I think what they end up doing is I think they keep Jimmy G they get Trey Lance here and they have Trey Lance work behind Jimmy G for a little bit. Half the season, Jimmy G isn't really showing up that much. Lance jumps in, and I think he makes a big jump. I agree with you completely, Aiden. I also had Trey Lance getting selected here. I saw a lot of people saying Justin Fields, which I wouldn't mind at all. I think Justin Fields is going to be a very good pro, especially if he's selected to a team that's just the right spot for him, and the 49ers would be. So I wouldn't be opposed to that at all, but I have Trey Lance going to the Niners. So, yeah, I also have a quarterback. I have Justin Fields, though, and I I just think Justin Fields is more of a – NFL prototype quarter, not like sit in the pocket prototype of this new age of just big six three six four guys that can run a, a four five forty. You know, when you look at the defenses that he's going to be playing against, he's going to have to move around. He, he won't have time to just sit in the pocket and, and be ready. So I think for the 49ers, you know, you re-sign Trent Williams for six more years. Yep. All you need is your quarterback now. I think they are going to move on from Jimmy G because I think they're going to get an early second, maybe. And for Jimmy G's $28 million price tag, which is what I believe it mm-hmm. is this year, um, I think they're they're going to find somebody who will take I, I think the it. Pats are going to find a way to acquire Jimmy G, to be yeah. honest. I, I think that Bill really wants him. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think adding a quarterback that can make a difference right away to the 49ers, it's, it's going to put them right back into Super Bowl contention. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a matter of who's going to be the right fit. Yeah, I agree. Um, number four here, I've got the Atlanta Falcons going with Justin Fields. Um, they've got a lot of needs, pretty much a need at almost every position. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of ways you could address this. I've seen a lot of uh, Kyle Pitts. I've seen a lot of uh, Panay Sewell. Um, I don't really see it. I think that it's been a while since the Falcons have been able to stay relevant. Obviously, they had the Super Bowl appearance, but then fell right off after. Um I think they just, at this point, they want to just complete rebuild and rehaul. I think that also happens. They probably end up moving from Julio Jones eventually. um, And we'll see what happens with that. But for now, I think they go Justin Fields. They have him work a year behind Matt Ryan or two, whatever it is. And, uh, and, you know, he's an Atlanta boy, went to Georgia at first. Um, You know, he's going to love to stay there. And I think all the fans really want him to stay in Georgia. So I think that's what happens. Um, I agree that. Justin Fields would be a great fit with Atlanta. However, I actually have them taking Kyle Pitts. Um, I think that outside of Lawrence, to me, he's the best prospect in the draft. And, uh, you know, I think he'd be a great fit in that offense. I think he would add a couple years to Matt Ryan's career, so they wouldn't really have to worry about replacing him right now. So I have Kyle Pitts going to Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. You put Kyle Pitts on that team. You're basically saying, giving the keys to Matt Ryan for one or two more years, saying – this is you. We're giving you everything you have. You know, you have Calvin Ridley, you have Julio. You mm-hmm. know, Calvin Ridley's obviously going to be, you know, Julio's successor. Julio's on his way out as well. Same with Matt Ryan. So I think, you know, put Kyle Pitts in there, gives you another option, as well as, you know, you already have Hayden Hurst, who's a, an above average tight end in the league. Yeah. Um, but you're drafting Kyle Pitts not even as a 
as to play tight end. You're drafting him to be moved around everywhere in the field. Getting another guy like that for Matt Ryan just to get open and catch balls is going to be really beneficial. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, he's a specimen. That, that guy's a beast. So anybody you get to him is going to be a lucky team and a happy team at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, at five, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. We're going here. I'm going to go with Panay Sewell. Um, a lot of talk about um, what March could have happened with this pick. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of people, some people think sure. that um, Rashawn Slater is actually the better pick here. And uh, I just don't really, I don't really buy it that much. Yeah. Um, I think Panay Sewell is a beast. I think he put up 30 reps on his bench or something crazy like that. Um, I saw something that said that he has um, shorter arms than they thought, like I guess wingspan. Um, which could make him slide. You know, I honestly, it, yeah, I don't think that the tangibles, obviously they make up with the player, um, but it's always overrated. You know, combine, there's guys that shoot up in the combine just because they're physical specimens and they don't do anything. And then there's guys that drop like DK, Met, or um, there's guys that, that end up dropping and they don't really produce as much. And then there's those guys that you see, DK Metcalf, who shows up, um, people think, oh, it didn't really mean much. And then he just proves it in the NFL that it does. Yeah. So, you know, either way, I, I don't, I think you don't really look into it. You look at his game film. How can he play football? You don't look at the, those things too much. I think you go Panay Sewell here. Obviously it's very, very um enticing to go ahead and grab Kyle Pitts and uh, get him, get Joe Burrow a weapon. Or um, obviously, you know, if you're going to go weapon wise, if you're going to go ahead and give Burrow another weapon, Kyle Pitts is a great option, but Jamar Chase is probably the guy they're going to end up doing because LSU and pair him up with, with Burrow, who's publicly said that he'd love to have a reunion. So I could see that too, but I'm going to go Sewell here. I also have uh, Penny Sewell going here. I think that especially after the horrific injury that happened to Joe Burrow, um, they have to fortify their O line, get him some protection. You know, I understand needing to um, go out, get some skill position players to get Burrow, some people to throw the football to. But with that being said, it's much easier for a quarterback to elevate his skill position players than his offensive line. It's, it's near impossible for him to elevate his offensive line. So I think they're going to go with Sewell here. I think he's the best offensive tackle in the draft, and I think it's a perfect fit. Yeah, I mean, I also have Sewell here. I think it's going to be very hard – to have Joe Burrow accept the fact that Jamar Chase won't be their draft pick. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, I think they would be an electric duo as well, but you know, I think arguably they had one of the most underrated rookies in the NFL last year in T Higgins, who mm -hmm. had over 900 yards yep. and has cemented himself as a really good wide receiver too in this league behind Tyler Boyd. So I think he already has his guys, you know, they have a decent tight end. Yeah. They have a good tight end mm -hmm. um, defense. You know, you lost Geno Atkins obviously, but he was getting older at his prime. Uh, I, th I think their defense is fine. They're not going to make any moves in that division, though. They're just not there yet. But I think right now you need to fortify yourself in the next 10 years. And what better position to do that for than on your line? Yeah, I mean, any pick you make here is just going to be building the team for the future. So do you want to build and protect your quarterback? Or do you just want to build on your defense? I think you go ahead and you protect your quarterback. Um, then the Dolphins back in at six. Um, so obviously they traded down with the 49ers, but then they traded back up with the Eagles. And so now the Dolphins are here at number six. Um, I think they go ahead and they draft Jamar Chase. Um, I think if for them dropping three picks, three spots back, getting a little bit more draft capital, and then still getting the guy that they most likely would have taken is just the biggest win they could imagine. Uh, Jamar Chase is a star. And I think they really show this is the year. All right. We're giving you Chase to a, Show us, show us what you could do. If you don't really prove anything, then we're going to be very disappointed. We're going to, we might have to look elsewhere within a year or two from now. But um, I think you go ahead, you get Chase, and you give them that option. Um, I, I had Jamar Chase going here. Uh, I think that it's really uh, important for them to give him as, as many weapons as possible, purely for the fact to see if he can be an NFL caliber quarterback. Um, I think that there were a, to be honest, a lot of red flags with Tua last year. He, he didn't look as good as I thought he would personally. But, you know, give him some more weapons, see if it works in his second year. Yeah, so I actually have Devonta Smith here just because of the Alabama connection. And, I mean, I don't know if anything's shaky just because Devonta Smith and all those receivers came out and said that, you know, Mac Jones was a lot better than Tua. Yeah, I thought that was um, a really bad look for Tua. Yeah. Huh. Um, but I, I don't know. I just think you sign Will Fuller, another speedster, Devonta Smith, He's a speedster, but he's more so just a guy that will get open. He's six foot one, so he's not a tiny guy. Um, and then you also have Devontae Parker. You're giving Tua every single weapon imaginable. Yeah. Can he can he make that work? And then if he can't make it work, 
his trade value is still going to be high at that point. So you trade him and then draft a quarterback the next year. And mm-hmm. I think if you draft a good enough rookie quarterback with that receiving core, he's going to do well. Yeah. And, you know, they still have a lot of draft picks uh, in this draft. And you could I could definitely see them making a move for – I don't know if they can get one of the top two running backs, if they can get Najee or uh, ETN, but I think they could definitely go up and they could probably get Chubba Hubbard or one of the two yep. running backs from North Carolina who show a lot of promise. Um, so they can go ahead and get that running game going also. Uh, pick number seven, the tr- Detroit Lions. I think, you know, it, it, they really they really need a complete overhaul. And this is a, a decision I think um, that's going to be tough for them. Uh, but I think you have Jared Goff. You lost Galladay, or um, yeah, you lost Galladay. You you really Marvin Jones had, Jr. Well, Marvin Jones Jr. You really only have uh, T.J. Uh, Hawkinson. But you know, it, it comes down to it. You got to kind of get a weapon. You got to give Goff something to just work with. And yep. um, I honestly, it's a little bit of a interesting move here. I think they go Kyle Pitts, and I think they double up tight end just because of the fact I think they end up using Pitts a little bit more as a receiver. And then a double tight end uh, look. Um, obviously, they could still go Devonta Smith or um, or um, Jalen Waddle, uh, two re- great receiving options. But I think they end up going Pitts just because of how how much hype he has around them right now. And and you can't really let a guy like that off the board when you're looking for a weapon. Um, I had the Lions taking Jalen Waddle purely for the fact that they have a severe need at the receiver position. And uh, I think Waddle's actually the second best receiver on the board. I think I used to think that Devontae Smith was a little better, but I've changed my mind. Um, I think Waddle's a little bit more of a complete receiver. So I have the Lions taking Jalen Waddle. Yeah, I have them going Jamar Chase here. I mean, there, I, it should be a no-brainer that they're either taking a receiver or a tight end. I would assume if he's still available, they're going to take Kyle Pitts as well, though, Yeah, uh, just because of what he can do. And I saw something online. And it was measuring Kyle Pitts' combine stats compared to Megatron's. And they were such – like, they, they were identical stats. Um, so, I think you put another, you know, Megatron 2.0 in Detroit, it can be really good. But, yeah, uh, in my draft, I already have Pitts taken. So, my pick here would be Jamar Chase. Yeah, no, I honestly think it's, it's not a bad take at all to go ahead and say Kyle Pitts is the best weapon we've seen enter a draft since maybe Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Um, so let's go into pick number eight, the Carolina Panthers. Now, this is where it gets interesting to me. I still think they're very much in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. Um, everything going on with him, all the allegations, and I believe he has over 15, maybe even 20 um, allegations um, against him. And it's starting, I think they just came out, that there's an investigation that's just been opened. Um, so obviously, we don't really know what what's going on with that. Um, but as of right now, I think um, – they can't go wrong with a pick like this. They grab uh, Rashawn Slater, uh, tackle out of Northwestern, um, you know, just sol- sol- solidify that line uh, a little bit more. That never hurts. Um, and I think if they end up do getting Watson, then you just have another O-line piece to give him even more protection. I, I think either way it works. Um, I actually had – I still have Justin Fields on the board, and I don't think – with all these allegations and stuff, obviously we don't know what happened. Um but as you said, they are investigating. So to me, that makes Deshaun Watson immovable for the time being. So I have the Panthers actually taking Justin Fields here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have them taking Trey Lance. We just flip-flopped on the uh, San Francisco quarterbacks. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Teddy B is sort of a bridge guy. Teddy B is a great mentor for a young quarterback. Mm-hmm. I think they will move on from him just because he does have $20 million guaranteed. Um, and I think bringing in that quarterback, you know, especially the eight pick, he's not being paid, you know, a dump truck load of money, you know, like these top three guys are. But I think, you know, a guy like Trey Lance, who is going to need time to learn, might as well put him behind Teddy Bridgewater to learn. Bridgewater, the bridge guy. You said it yep. best. Um, number nine here, Denver Broncos. I have them going uh, with Mac Jones, actually. I think I for a while now, I have them going corner. Um I had them going Caleb Farley, I think, in the last draft. Uh, I think they just they see all this quarterback hype and they're like, you know what? We want a little bit of action. We want to get into this. I think they go ahead and they grab Mac Jones. Um, I still don't think Mac Jones works. I definitely think he doesn't work in an O-line like the Broncos and really a kind of – there's a lot of weapons. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of weapons there in Denver. But, yep. you know, it's, it's just a, a, wet, a mess of a team to begin with. So I don't think he ends up doing much. Um, but I think they go Mac Jones. Aiden, I completely agree with you. We looked at this the exact same way. When we originally did this mock draft, I 
I really didn't think that the Broncos were going to do what they did in the past, and that's reach for a quarterback. But with with all the hype around Mac Jones right now, I think that the Broncos are going to take him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I also don't like the pick of Mac Jones here, but it works. And then again, you have that Alabama connection with yep. um, Jerry Judy. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's already coming into it with a little bit of chemistry, which is always good. Yeah. Um. Now, number 10, we have the Cowboys are up. You know, this is a this is a pick that I think is obvious. Um, I don't think anyone can convince me that there's a better corner in the draft than Patrick Sertain. Um, people give the Farley. Now, all of a sudden, it's the J.C. Horn hype. Um, pretty much everyone's giving hype besides to Sertain, and it's ridiculous. I saw a picture of him. Um, I, I don't know if it was at the con- – it wasn't at the con- – it was at the pro day maybe. Guy's a unit. Like, maybe one of the biggest physical specimens I've seen since DK Metcalf. You know, he's, he's a star. His, his father was a very good player. So I think they go certain here. Cowboys uh, solidify their secondary a little bit more. Yeah, Aiden, I agree with you again. I think it's a clear need for Dallas. Um, they struggled immensely on defense last year. If they can get their defense going, I think they'll be, uh, you know, in well now with a 17 game season in the 11 and six, uh, 10 and seven, maybe even 12 and five range. You know, their offense is is fantastic. So you know, they just need to make more stops on defense. And I think Pat Sertain's a great start. Another clean sweep. I mean, a 6'2 cornerback who's at, as, as as athletic as he is, you know, you're looking at a guy like Jalen Ramsey. Like, you can get a Jalen Ramsey to slip out of your secondary. They're going to be very good. Um, New York Giants here at pick 11. Um, I think that they can go a lot of places with this. Obviously, gra- uh, grabbing Kenny Galladay was a big, big step for their team. Um, but I think they go and they solidify their defense a little bit. Anytime you can grab a guy with as- the athleticism as Mika pa- Micah Parsons, um, I think you got to do it. Uh, he's a- one of those guys that's just going to, no matter where you put him, he's kind of going to be at least a solid guy. Um, and you throw him on the edge, he might be able to make a really big impact in this league. And I think the Giants could kind of use that versatility on their defense. I think they go Mika Parsons. Aiden, again, I agree with you completely. I think it's a perfect fit. Um, it's a clear need for the Giants. Well, not really a need, but, you know, something a, a good – actually, it's a good point for the Giants, you know, their defense. It's just they can add to it now, and they, they can start to build a real dominant defensive core. So I think it's a perfect pick for them. Yeah, I mean, we have another clean sweep. Um, <laughs> I think the signing of Dory Jackson really helped. Uh, I, I think that was a bigger hole that was filled in the Kenny Galladay personally. Because, I mean, the Giants had a bunch of wide receiver twos. They got their number one guy. Mm-hmm. But I think ultimately having somebody to pair up with, you know, Logan Ryan and Jabril Peppers mm-hmm. is, is way more important than that, especially in such a pass-heavy league like we're in. So I think adding another freak of, an, like, an athlete in um, Michael Parsons. Even Bradbury, right? Yeah, and Bradbury, yep. You know, that's that's a – and I think a lot of people underrate. You, you throw Dory Jackson in there uh, super fast. You throw him in at the slot. Uh, and then you got Kyle, or uh, uh, sorry, Logan Ryan, who's just he was staple on the Patriots defense for a while. He's a great yep. guy to throw in your two. Um, and then Bradbury's just been proving he's a good enough one to sustain in the league. I think that's a great spot for the Giants. I think they really built up a squad for themselves. Uh, finally, New York fans have a team to really celebrate on. Mm-hmm. Um, pick number twelve here. I got the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they go ahead and they draft. They grab. <laughs> they grab Jalen Waddle. Um, you know, I also agree with that. I think he is the second best receiver in the draft uh, behind Jamar Chase and in front of Devonta Smith. But, you know, it, it comes in it, when it comes down to it, whether or not they missed or they didn't miss on their last uh, receiver they drafted in the first round last year. That's that's still up in the air. We have to see, you know, we didn't really get enough playing time. But um, Jalen Waddle, without a doubt, I think is better than um, than him. So, you know, you go ahead. You, you already upgrade on receiver. Um, you got Jalen Hurts, who just switched his number to number one, and he's ready to roll. Uh, he's the only quarterback there. Um, so they, they, he's going to be excited. This is going to be an offense that's going to be running through Jalen Hurts, and you get him a nice weapon like that. I love it. Yeah, so I already had, obviously, Jamar Chase off the board by this point. I also had Waddle off the board, so I actually went with Devontae Smith uh, yeah. for the same reasons as you. Um, they just need to give him more weapons. Uh, It's kind of similar to Tua. Uh, They need to see if he's ready for the NFL, if he's an NFL caliber quarterback, and they have to give him as many weapons as possible to see if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I also have Jalen Waddle here, and I don't like – like Jalen Waddle's 5'10", but I think, you know, it could be a toss-up if they want to move back, if they're set on receiver, you know, go after a guy like Rashad Bateman, who 
you know, opted out last year, didn't get to prove himself, but I think he is a top five receiver in this draft class. And I think pairing up um, a guy like Rashad Bateman with Jalen Rager, who, you know, is, is another guy, similar build to Jalen Waddle. Um, I think, you know, having that big receiver and then that slot type prototype guy um, in there, you know, that'd be great for Jalen Hurts. Yeah, um, I can see that too. Um, then we have pick number 13, Los Angeles Chargers. I think they go ahead, they grab Christian Darishaw, um, tackle from Virginia Tech. A lot of people are saying that he could move, make his way up to being that top five, top six pick um, ahead of Sewell. Uh, I, I don't really see it. I, I think Darishaw is a phenomenal tackle, but I think Sewell is the best in college football for two years now, maybe even. Um, I think they go ahead, they grab uh, Darishaw, and they solidify Herbert's O-line, give him a little bit of protection, and uh, keep him upright. I also went with an O-lineman because I think it's a clear need for the Chargers, protect Herbert, give him more support. But I saw Rashawn Slater on the board, so I went with him here for the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, I have Slater here for the Chargers, too. I think it can ultimately go back and forth between him and uh, Sewell. You know, obviously Sewell didn't play last year, so we didn't get to really see a full glimpse of him. Um, But, yeah, I think just giving more protection for uh, Justin Herbert is the biggest thing for them. Yeah, I agree. Um, pick number 14, the Vikings. I've got them going and grabbing Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, you know, he's inside O-line, uh, but he can move around, and he's uh, – I'm pretty sure they've made that known. Uh, you got to grab a guy that can help in the run game with uh, Dalvin Cook. Obviously, Vikings always have a really good running game. Um, keep it – Keep. you know, a lot of these NFL teams, it's in their nature to keep – um, their, their way, the way that they, um, kind of make themselves known and, and make themselves effective, you keep it going on throughout the year. So if you have a notar- notoriously or uh, good offense for years now, you keep your, your running game strong. If you have a really good pass, uh, pass rush, like the Steelers have it, you keep that, you know, you, you kind of follow your, your, um, I guess your archetype as a, as a squad. Um, so I think they go and they grab Elijah Vera Tucker, a great, uh, great player there inside. You could play inside, outside, all that O-line. I actually had Christian Dersa, uh going to the Vikings. And to me, the Vikings are kind of in a weird spot. There's not really a move that they can make right now that would make them a for sure playoff team. You know, they're like, they're kind of in the middle. They're, they're not a great team, but they're not an awful team. But I have Christian Darisaw going here. So I actually have Cody Payne going here. Um, I think – Having another guy on that D line, you know, you just signed Dalvin Tomlinson to a big deal, and now all of a sudden, uh, Daniel Hunter is having like internal discussions. He's not very too happy with the organization. So if he's on his way out, or if he forces his way out, you need another guy on that D line, another DN type guy. I think Dare or Quiddy Payne, six four two seventy. So you're putting another big guy on that line, huge body. Him and Dalvin Tomlinson will take up space and and cause havoc on it. You know, you just signed Patrick Peterson as well that defense could be very underrated. Yeah, um, I, I agree with that, too. I, I think um, with this next pick here, the New England Patriots, obviously I'm a Patriots fan, so it's Ben. Um, but I think we can go a lot of ways with this pick. Um, I'm going to kind of put up a couple scenarios. I think um, there's a chance, there's definitely a chance we can go ahead and grab and move up and grab um, Justin Fields. I could see that happening. Um, it's going to take a lot. But, you know, Belichick, you know, he's had this crazy big offseason – uncharacteristic um you know the moves might not stop and he might just keep going uh Justin Fields obviously I'd, I'd love to see Justin Fields as a Patriot um so we'll see uh if they don't go and do that move then obviously they're kind of planning to do quarterback some somewhere else maybe it's mm-hmm. Jimmy G whatever yeah. else um if they do that I see, can see them going a couple ways uh, uh like you said Quiddy Pay, uh good pass rusher we could always use another pass rusher Chase Winovich has proven to be um, getting better and better um, over the years. And he's, he's kind of a beast. He's one of those bull rush guys that will just knock you over um, and, and go get you. But um, I, you could definitely use another guy maybe to pair him up on the other end. Uh, and if not, I think they could also go ahead and make a move for Devonta Smith um, and just grab another weapon. You know, they, you've seen it already. They just uh, – weapons galore. You know, Hunter Henry, Johnny Smith, uh, Al Galore, all those guys – I think they can keep going and they can go ahead and really bolster this offense even more so. Yeah. So I I agree with you. I I could see them making a move for Justin Fields. However, knowing how much Bill loves Jimmy G, 
I think that he's going to try and tr- try to trade, you know, maybe a first rounder next year, maybe next year's first round pick or this year's second round pick. I don't think he'll use this pick uh, to get Jimmy G. I think he'd be overpaying grossly with this pick for Jimmy G. But here I actually have him going with Quiddy Pay. Um, I think that he's Bill's kind of guy. Bill loves the defensive guy. Um, you know, he this is the this is his first chance in a little bit where he can take uh, – a guy on defense that has superstar potential written all over him. So I think Bill goes with Quiddy Peck. Yeah, I also have another defensive player here. I think I think they're going to give Cam, you know, one more shot. They signed him for $14 million. Then you saw, you know, on Instagram, Stidham working out with all these guys. And I, I don't think Stidham's good at all. But I think, Stidham you know, stinks. yeah, I, <laughs> I think if worst comes to worst, Cam goes down. You put Stidham in there, and it's not like, oh, you're definitely going to lose this game. You probably still lose, but it's not like a sure thing. Um, I think that offense, it, it's going to be a good Patriots offense. Um, year two with everyone, especially Cam. Um, you know, you brought back Trent Brown. Guys are taking less money to come and play for the Patriots, who had a historically terrible season by their standards last year. So I think adding a guy like Gregory Rousseau on defense – will bolster that, you know, pair him alongside Ch- um, Chase Winovich. I think Stephon Gilmore is going to be extended. I know, like, a lot of people do not think that, but I- I'm a believer that Stephon Gilmore will be extended. Um, you know, bringing in a guy who's six foot seven to rush a quarterback is a pretty nice asset to have in your defense. Yeah, and going off that, the Stephon Gilmore stuff, you know, I think you can go a couple ways. I think if the Patriots go ahead and they trade Gilmore, which I – wouldn't love to see because, you know, he's Gilly Lock. You know, he's been he's been a staple on our defense for the past couple of years, and he is a beast. Um, but if we yeah. do and go ahead and we trade him, I think we can go ahead and take J.C. Horn or, or even Caleb Farley uh, with this pick. Um, but obviously, if we extend them, then money is a little bit tighter, um, and we have to go elsewhere with this pick. Um, well, what's yeah. interesting to me about Stefan is I wonder if, you know, Bill's – uh, really, really famous for standing by. Uh, I'd rather move off a player too soon than too late. So I could, I could honestly see him packaging um, Stefan and this pick for moving up in the draft, maybe a little bit. But for him to do that, I would want them to move up a significant right. amount. Like, hey, I yeah. mean, between like, like into the top five, five and seven. Yeah, they they would need to be between there. Um, hey, but I mean, you know. I hope Stefan. I saw today that he's willing to sign a team friendly extension where yep. uh, it's a it's less of a cap hit. So I'm encouraged by that. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, you can go and package, uh, like you said, Gilmore and Akil Harry and the 15th overall pick and maybe move up to a pick number four pick number. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. It, if they're going to package Gilmore in the pick, they need to move up that that substantially. Yeah, you know, there are teams up there that'll that'll do it, you know. Uh, Obviously, six is a little a little late for for in my opinion for what they're gonna probably gonna give up. But yeah. you give the Dolphins Gilmore, um, yeah. Nikhil Harry. They still get the receiver, even though he's not really proven yeah. much. And they still have a fifteenth pick. You know, that's the fifteenth pick. They might even be able to get one of the three. Maybe be able to get Devonta Smith. And, yeah, uh, I mean, I yeah. I don't see the the Dolphins really going after that trade particularly just because their cornerbacks are solidified. I think they have the and in seven. division. Like, yeah, yeah, I I think they have the the best just sole cornerback group in the league. Um, you know, I could see another team like Atlanta doing that trade, though, where yeah. you're yeah. giving Matt yeah. Ryan another weapon and Nikhil Harry, and then you're bolstering that defense who lost three safeties. Yeah. You know, so you put a, one of the best cornerbacks in the game on that defense, I think they could do some damage. I agree. Then again, um, if they were to move up to the Falcons pick, it would, in a way, it would be – even though we have two very good tight ends, it would be tough for me to see them not take Pitts with the fourth pick because I think that he's just phenomenal. So you would rather, if you're the Patriots at four, you'd rather take a tight end over a quarterback. I would rather, I would rather them take Kyle Pitts and then find a way to put a deal together for Jimmy G. Which that instead would be, of drafting a quarterback for that would be interesting too. But I, I just can't see us moving up that high and, and not going QB. Um, I mean. Yeah. Ki- that would be the greatest tight end core in the history of sports. Um, yep. Those three, you'd, you'd probably have to move Pitts at receiver, honestly, to get him any any playing yeah. time, unless unless McDaniel's got a three tight end set that he's he wants to pull out. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching episode nine, uh, Tipsy Tailgate.
Uh, we're going to be coming back at you hopefully next Tuesday um, coming up for our 10th episode back in person. So we're excited about that. Uh, please subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. And um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See you.